it's so incredible because tucked into that grass is a little spotted form of Shungile. Now you can see her there. There those little spots are just showing themselves. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely incredible camouflage that this leopard has. And you can see why at night they spend so much time hunting. And that's because they just disappear in this darkness and it becomes so difficult to see them. And I'm sure what she's doing is she's getting into that um, sort of grassy area and away from the road because she at the end of the day wants to try and camouflage as much as possible and she's going to wait for the impalas to start moving back in her direction and they will do that because the reason why is that the wind is in her favor so it's blowing from where the impalas are towards her and there is a little open section off the road so on this main road there's a fire break which is a big clearing and that's why the impalas are here because they know it's a little bit more open they can see a little bit better and so I'm sure they're going to come out of this thicket and try and come back towards this area and that's going to work in her favor if she's lying in the grass like that the only problem with her is because she's young she's a little bit inexperienced and so she's going to have to hold her nerve and wait for those impalas to get really really close before she tries the other issue that she has is that these impalas that we saw are all big adult males now Shongile has gotten a little bit bigger over the last few months but I think she's a little bit too small unfortunately to try take on a male impala it will be a very difficult kill for her Hosanna on the other hand he's got the bulk now to be able to do it but Shungile is a little bit small to be able to get that right so it's going to be interesting to see when she actually brings down her first impala and whether she manages with the males so William you're wondering if Karula could have moved on and left this habitat or this territory to Shongile. Well, William, I suppose it's possible. Um, you can never discount any of these kind of theories. And with Karula, it's possible that she's moved into the Manyaleti, given that Shaluva is now gone. Um, she could have moved further south. These are all possibilities, but it's just a really tough thing to think that she's decided to leave her cubs so quickly and with such an abrupt sort of end. You know, normally with leopards, you'll start to see a slow wearing down of the relationship. So the mother will start to growl, she'll start to hiss, she'll no longer fetch them for food as much, but it's, it's a slow process. Whereas with Karula, it seemed like she was with them one day and then the next day she was gone. So I don't know. I mean, it's possible she could have moved and, and left this to Shungile, but at the end of the day, this has always been the core of her territory. She's always used this as the place where she's had her cubs, where she's denned. And so it would make no sense to me that she's just left um, this, this, these cubs here and left the area that she's most at home to. Now, you must remember that she's had multiple litters. So this is not her first female that she's had. She's had you know, Shadow, Tandi, Shivinzi. And those are all leopards that she could have potentially left them on Juma and then moved elsewhere because of the fact that Safari, Intima... Um, ostrich copies female, um, Quetile, they've all moved on. They've all shifted into other areas. And that means that there was all this territory available even when she had Shivinzi. So at the end of the day, I don't think that's the case, but it's possible. It really is possible. You never know with Karula. You can never discount her. I know that there's been times where she's been missing for two, three months, and all of a sudden she just pops out of nowhere as though she's always been there. And, and, and so maybe that's what the case is. Maybe she's trying to sever this bond between her and this cub, and this is why we're in this situation. So we'll just have to hold out hope. But as Brent said, every day that goes by, unfortunately, it becomes less and less likely that she's going to return. So we're going to have to just hope that in the next few weeks she does rock up and we see some sign of her that can indicate that she's actually here. Now, there is a game drive vehicle that's just joined us. So I'm going to try and explain to them where this leopard is. It's going to be very difficult for somebody who doesn't know because as I showed you, you can't really see too much so I'm going to try and just quickly talk to them and so I do apologize for two seconds yeah but good the ingwe is right here but see where the male is yeah so the, that gentleman that's there in front is Derek who's my old tracker that I worked with now I don't know if you can, could see when I shone the light, but there is an impala maybe two, three meters from that leopard, really, really close. Just on the other side of that bush is an impala. So I reckon if she just sits tight, she's going to be, uh, no, but there's a mala right there with her. Um, so I reckon if she just sits still, she's going to be lucky and maybe she'll get it right. So let's see how she goes. Can you see the impala? I can't see it anymore, but it was there. 
I saw it very briefly when I shone my light. I don't want to shine my light again because I don't want to blind the Impala or shine on little Shongile and expose her. But I definitely saw an Impala somewhere close there. But I can't see it anywhere there. And it's just out of range of the IR. You can see it starts to get quite dark in the background. So it's somewhere there with the spotlight. It's a little bit more powerful. So pick up the eye shine of the Impala. But there she is. She's still just in her little bush staying dead still. She knows that something is close by, so she's going to try and just position herself in a way that she can hold tight for a while. Now let's just see what plays out. It's at this time that you've got to be quiet and you've got to allow things to take place. And while it looks like we should have lights on them so we can see what's going on, it's much, much better just to let everything play out. And this is where this IR comes into its own. If we didn't have the IR lights, we would be sitting in complete darkness. We wouldn't know where the leopard was. We wouldn't know where the impala was. It would make it really tough for us to be able to sort of tell the story of what's going on. Look, look how she's moved her head now. So she's positioning her head, listening very carefully, watching. And she's in such a good place. Where she's there is a little dip as well. So if the impalas walk there, they're going to really have to be on top of her to see her. And it's going to be very, very, very tough indeed. And you can see she's almost poised to strike. She's almost twitching. She's sitting so tensed. And she's got every muscle that's perfectly on alert. So that if anything does come close to her, that she can just spring and be able to grab it. It's absolutely amazing. And her ears will be fixated on that impala. Her eyes will also be watching it. And she'll be able to then pounce if anything does come close. Daniel, you're wondering if a female and male leopard decide on their own territories. Well, no, not really. They Obviously, we'd love to stay in their natal territory because that's what they know and that's what they're comfortable with. And they know that there's safe points and places that they can go to for food and water. But unfortunately, there's competition. So there's going to be other males and other females that are also occupying those same areas. And that means that those, unfortunately, those leopards get pushed out by those more bigger territorial, more experienced animals. And so they don't really get to choose their territory as much as they would want to. I would imagine they have to try and work for it and they try and find places to be able to find a territory. And as soon as they find a gap where there's no you know, potential threat of a female or a male, they then settle down there. And that's why generally females give a section of their territory to a young female because she's not strong enough to push out older females. And so she's got to kind of allow for this process to take place and for that little female to get bigger to be able to then challenge the females around her and expand her territory now you will see a light every now and then shining like i say there's a game drive vehicle that's joined us with guests that are from around the world and so they obviously don't have ir and they can't see this leopard so every now and then they're just shining just so they can get a better idea of where the leopard is so there we go you'll just see a light flickering every now and then I can't see the Impala anymore. I don't know where it's gone to. Alright, so while we sit here in bated breath and watch what little Shongile does and see if we can't see where these Impalas are, let's go back to James who's in the tent and I'm sure he's got something just as interesting to show you. Sure, I've got anything quite as interesting as 